Hey guys, today we are making a super yummy spaghetti casserole in our casserole crock, all while having a whole lot of fun. March the ooey gooey cheese, all right. to my camper kitchen. I am Chris from recipes at crock.com and today we are making a spaghetti casserole in our casserole crock and we are doing it with some low carb options. So if you're low carb you can follow along that way. If you're not low carb you can just use your typical spaghetti ingredients. But what we're going to do is we are going to assemble this yummy yummy casserole my family absolutely loves and let it cook for a couple hours and then um, give it a give it a taste. So here we go. So what we're going to start out with is two pounds of ground beef already cooked up. I cooked this up with a little bit of onion, a little bit of garlic, however, however you normally cook up your ground beef. I do want to add a little salt and pepper to it because I totally forgot to do that while I was cooking it because I was cooking a lot of things at the same time. So salt and pepper to taste. That's all you got to do. There's going to be a lot of flavors. That's not my pepper grinder. Here it is. There's going to be a lot of flavors in this, so you don't have to add tons. But to that, we are going to add optional, going to add um, a, a can or two of mushrooms drained. So we've already drained them, and we're just going to add these in there. My family prefers... Um, mushrooms with their spaghetti. Um, if yours doesn't, it's not going to hurt anything to leave it out. Um, and to this, we are going to add 24 ounces of your favorite pasta sauce. This is Rayo's. It's low carb. Tomato basil is my favorite. And I'm going to just add this to the uh, to the pan here. I'm going to mix this up. This is our sauce. We're going to also want to have eight ounces of our favorite spaghetti um, cooked up already. And I've already done that and I have it draining over here. I like to use, I had the package somewhere and now it is gone. Uh, it is uh, the Great Low Carb Bread Company. Um, it says it's four, uh, four servings, but I actually usually make a lot more servings out of it um, every time I make it. If you are using that particular spaghetti, then what um, I would advise is you watch it very, very closely because it can overcook very very easily um, way more than regular spaghetti and way more than all their other low carb pastas the spaghetti is the one that tastes fantastic but I have problems with it overcooking and actually this recipe came about after I ruined a batch of that spaghetti so I decided to make a casserole to kind of mask the fact that the spaghetti had fallen all apart and it actually tasted just fine. But of course we would prefer for our spaghetti to be spaghetti shaped. So um, so what I wanted to let you know uh, is that if you are using this, you've gotta be careful. And if you've had a bad experience with it, try undercooking it and you will have a much different experience. We love this pasta. So I'm gonna put this in here. If you're using regular pasta, I would say you're gonna want your pasta to be just under al dente you want it to still have a little bit of chew in it because it's still going to cook up in the casserole crock so the the more done it is before you start the more mushy it will be in the casserole this particular casserole again i don't think it matters as much um as much as if you were going to just eat like a plate of spaghetti because that's not what this is. Like you cut this casserole and serve it up like a casserole. Yes, the spaghetti noodles are in there. You could technically use like macaroni noodles or some other kind of noodle if you want. Um, it just has a yummy spaghetti flavor with a twist. Okay, so we just wanna mix the pasta in. 
Again, you don't want to over mix or your pasta is going to break up way too much. But once it's all mixed up, we're going to dump it into our casserole crock. If you have a tradition, if you don't have a casserole crock and you want to make this in a traditional crock pot, I've done that as well. Like I said, my family adores this recipe. I've tested it and tested it and tested it and they love it. So you can make it in any kind of crock pot. But you just want to go ahead and um, put it all in in there. And so now we're going to go for our little twist here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a lemon and we are going to zest it. Technically, you don't have to have the lemon zest, but I'm telling you it adds so much flavor. So all we're going to do is take this microplaner and we're just going to go over the outside of the lemon and just get the yellow part. So when it starts to turn white, we move on and we go to a different part of the lemon. So we do this. And if you're going to zest and use the juice of a lemon, you want to always zest it first because it's much easier to zest a, a full-size lemon than one that's been cut up. So I've got most of the zest off of here. And you're always going to have a little bit of extra on the inside of your plane. Make sure you're, if you're running your finger down it, you're running it down the inside and not the outside. That would be very ouchy. And then we're going to cut this lemon in half and uh, put it in our lemon juicer. And we're going to use the juice of that lemon as well. There's one, and there's the other half. And to that, we're going to add a teaspoon of our favorite Italian seasoning. You could also use, I've used in the past, and I might actually use this time because it's a little less peppery, um, a pizza seasoning. We had one of those, maybe I can't find it. pizza seasoning you could use your favorite Italian it's just gonna have like a mix of oregano uh, sometimes basil this is a half I have a half teaspoon here so I'm gonna put two in so it'll be a full teaspoon some Italian seasonings like this particular one have a lot of pepper in it so it can make things pretty spicy if you add a lot okay to that we are going to add 15 ounces of ricotta cheese now this makes this whole thing, and we're going to just mix all this up. This makes this whole thing have a very, uh, almost like spaghetti slash lasagna taste, but we absolutely love it. And leftovers are so good. So what you're just going to do is mix up this cheese mixture. And then we're going to scoop it in dollops over the top of the spaghetti. And this is going to be a yummy cheese filling that's going to be right under the mozzarella cheese, kind of like a, a specialty uh, baked spaghetti almost. So just put dollops down and you can spread them out a little bit as you go. You just want kind of an even coating so that when you slice into this, everybody gets a little ricotta cheese because that is the yummy, yummy part. And like I said, I'm about to sneeze from opening that pepper. Oh my goodness. Um, like I said, after you get it in there, you can kind of smoosh it down and spread it out. It doesn't have to be an exact science. If the sauce gets on the cheese, it's fine. As Addie says, it's all fine. That's, she's always telling me how fine everything is. <laughs> all right, so once your ricotta is all spread out, Now we're going to add two to three cups of cheese, depending on your taste, of mozzarella cheese to the top. And we're going to cook this on high for two hours. 
or until all the cheese and sides are bubbly. Some of the edges are going to crisp up a little bit. So you just want to get a nice coat of cheese on there. It's totally, uh, there's a lot of spaghetti in there. And so this is a great way to stretch a little bit of spaghetti a long way. Um, you know, one jar of sauce, uh, it kind of has double the meat in it, so it kind of beefs it up a little bit. And then this casserole can easily serve uh, eight very large portions, um, 10, or if this were a part of a potluck, you could even stretch it to 12. So we're gonna put the lid on this, like I said, we're going to cook it on high for two hours, and I will see you back here in three, two, one. And we are back. It has been about two hours. I almost said 10 hours. Don't cook it for 10 hours. It has been two hours, and everything is ooey, gooey, cheesy, and bubbly now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of it and come and show you what it looks like. to go ahead and cut my portion sizes which is one of the reasons why I love the casserole crock um, and I'm gonna go ahead and do this in 10 pieces because eight just kind of is a lot because there's a lot in this casserole so I just go ahead and cut the portions and then that way when we put the leftovers up we can put it up in portions Alright, watch the ooey gooey cheese. Alright, yummy, yummy. Let me come see. Hopefully, it will cool off on the way. So, as you can see, let's see, I have you a little higher. I think maybe that's been my problem this whole time with these camera angles is <laughs> I put you up a step further than what I used to. <laughs> Anyhow, so you've got your pasta, your spaghetti with your tomato sauce and your mushrooms and beef right there. And then you've got that ricotta surprise right underneath all that yummy mozzarella. So let's get a little bit of it all and hopefully it'll cool off a little bit. So I don't uh, burn myself. Mmm. Mmm is hot but man that is so good okay so if you love lasagna you're gonna love this if you love spaghetti you're gonna love this this is just like the perfect combination and I really really love that ricotta layer with that bright lemony flavor kind of just complements the um, the tomato very very well and then that Italian seasoning that's in there is going to have a little bit of a peppery taste to it that's just like, it's like if you have, if you've ever had really good manicotti that has that like little peppery taste inside the ricotta. So I highly recommend. Anyhow, mmm. Now, my spaghetti, I definitely cooked al dente this time. And it kept its shape as you can see um, and in but again I've made this with overcooked spaghetti admittedly <laughs> that's kind of how I came up with this one and it kind of just blended into everything else and it still tasted wonderful so if you ever accidentally overcook your spaghetti toss it in a crock pot because <laughs> um, the crock pot's just gonna cook it a little bit more but Anyhow, the star of this show is definitely the cheese layers. So, so yummy. If you like this video, we'd love for you to give us a thumbs up. If you're not already a member of the Crock Posse, we'd love for you to click subscribe down below and become a member of our slow cooking family around here. If you'd like notified every time we upload a video, click the ding -a -ling. That is the notification bell down below. It tells YouTube that you want to know every time we upload a video. But whatever you do, we hope you laugh often, 
eat good food, and speak life. Bye guys. If you could only see that I'm standing on one foot balancing <laughs> right here so I don't fall down. <sighs> it's been a day. Today I have a treat for you. I need to make sure you can see. We are making a super yummy spaghetti casserole. Shoot, that's hot. Oh my goodness, I did not realize I already had that on. <laughs> Having a time. Ooh, do not grab the metal insert of your, or the metal piece. Okay, ow. Let's try it again. Hey guys, welcome back to my camper kitchen. I still feel like this is tilted. Hey guys, I'm learning and my head is cut off. How did that come? I am Chris from recipes that crop.com and now that is back in the way. What is wrong with this angle? Mikey's gonna love editing this. If you want to see the latest, click on the left right here. If you feel like subscribing, click on the right, my dear. And if you think we're